Cooper is an Academy Award winning actor. John Sayles is a writer and director widely admired for the quirky and thoughtful independent movies he started making more than four decades ago. Chris Cooper and John Sayles were in Portland recently to attend the Bates Film Festival. We sat down with the two of them to talk movies, but started the conversation by asking Chris Cooper if he remembered the first time he ever performed in front of a live audience. My sixth grade teacher, Miss um, Sheffield, she saw my shyness, and we had this assembly. I sang a duo with Suzanne Tipton, I remember to this day, and got a big applause, and I kind of like this. It's kind of not bad. John, what's the story of your first public performance? Reading um, Death of a Salesman in a class, and the teacher just said, OK, we're going to do a scene, and you do this part, you do this part, and you do this part. And I played uh, Willie Loman's neighbor who, you know, tells him everybody shouldn't like him, and, you know, who liked J.P. Morgan, right, right. you know, and a turkey's back, and he looked like a butcher. But with his pockets on, he was a very popular man. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember. At what point in your lives did it maybe start to seem possible, like that maybe it wasn't just a fantasy or a dream, but maybe you could act, write, direct, get involved in theater and or movies. The move to New York, I mean, I had nothing to fall back on. I had a little, little bit of carpentry skills, and that was, my, that was my survival job in Manhattan when I moved there, but I moved with four other guys who graduated, you know, university that year. Well, I was never certain. I was never certain. It was, it, but then, but then I was not going to return to Missouri, so I had to make it. John Sales was working at a sausage factory when he sold a story to a prestigious magazine, which led to a life-changing opportunity, an offer to help write a B-movie called Piranha. You know, my agent called and said, okay, it's a movie, it's a rewrite on a movie called Piranha. Um, <laughs> You want it, you got it. And I said, hey, you know, I love those kind of movies. And so, you know, it was a big deal. Stop that. Hey, keep your hand out of the water. What's wrong with the water? The water is filled with carnivorous fish. Your first big break in film kind of came from this guy, right? You bet. You bet. In many, in many ways. John, uh, I'm so lucky to have had uh, mate one to work with, which was a historical piece about the coal mining wars in 1920, a piece of American history that nobody knows anything about. You think this man is your enemy? Huh? This is a worker. Any union keeps this man out ain't a union. It's a goddamn club. When you cast Chris in Mate One, did you have any inkling of the kind of career that he was going to have ahead of him? Oh, no, you never know that stuff. I mean, you know, especially, you know, I made a movie with, with people who were supposed to be high school kids, you know, and all these people, you know, half of them are stars now. You know, you don't know what's going to happen with them. You know they're good, <coughs> or you wouldn't have cast them. You guys have made five films together now? We have, yes. Mm -hmm. How much does he have to direct you, or is it now just sort of telepathic between you two? More often than not, I appreciate that, that, that the director has given me, you know, free reign. You know, he's cast me. I'm going to do my homework. I'm going to come prepared, and I'm going to have some strong ideas. And the next best thing is if I'm not on the right track, then the director, you know, sets me sets me straight. You're not there to teach people how to act on the set. You're there to direct their talent. So on the set, it's more like, let's see what the actor is going to do with this. And then, well, can you try that a little more angry, but don't show it so much? Or this time, maybe show it. You know, so you're, 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 you're basically, they're carrying the ball, and you're just saying, this time, go around the right end instead of the left end. Chris Cooper said something interesting, too. He said that before a movie starts shooting, John Sayles gives all the actors like a one or two page biography of what is not in the script. It's oh, not wow. the dialogue or anything that's in the script. 
so that they have a better sense of their character. And yeah. Chris Cooper said he always finds that very helpful. Well, and I love what he just said too about kind of letting the actors come in first and you kind of see what they have to offer yeah. and then you build off of that. Yeah, and as Sale said, you're not, you're not teaching them how to act. Yeah. They know how to exactly. act. You just steer them a little bit. Very cool. Tomorrow we're gonna have more of our conversation with Chris Cooper and John Sales. One of the things that we're gonna talk about is how John Sales has always had to scramble to raise money to make movies. The studios have not supported him. And he gives an interesting answer to the question of whether he's frustrated at not having directed a movie in years. They'll also talk about Lone Star, a movie they made together, which was shown this year at the Bates Film Festival in Portland. A sausage maker and a carpenter. Look at him now. <laughs> I love it. Come on.